Hello and welcome. Um, I'm going to talk about a video about NS3 network simulator. But the uh, problem with the example I have with uh, to create a custom application, the problem is that that used a net device to send data, to send packets. This is what I do in my work because WaveNet device have a function called send X which is which which basically have a parameter to set up the tx info the transmission info so you can set the uh, data rate and transmission power on per packet level so every packet you send can have different uh, uh, data rate and and that's basically why i use it so a lot of you don't use that method to communicate with data when running simulation. You probably use sockets. Now, one thing my professor taught me about socket is that why do we use sockets? Sockets provide an abstraction, an API. So what happened with the socket, it's like a pipe with two ends. So you could write it in one end and it goes to the other end. And that's basically how you understand sockets. You know, you got UDB sockets and TCB sockets. Basically, you you send a payload of data down that socket, and the socket programming principle basically encapsulates these this payload with the headers such as the IP header and the UDB header. TCP header, whatever, right? So that's the abstraction. And the API basically function calls so that you don't do it. Actually, Unix provides something called raw socket, which allows you to write anything you want to an outgoing socket. You need to be an administrator to uh, use raw sockets, this thing with Unix. And um, yeah, a lot of hackers use it. I mean, uh, there's a, <laughs> there is a... Um, an attack you could do, which is called denial of service attack on Wi-Fi. Basically, you send a de-authentication de uh, request. You can pretty much uh, disconnect everyone connected to the Wi-Fi. The, you could, you could, as long as you build the packet and make it look like it's coming from the uh, Wi-Fi access point, it will disconnect uh, the users. Uh, that's because management frames weren't authenticated. So I think they fixed that, but I'm not sure if your Wi-Fi access point fixed that. I think the standard was called 802.11w, which specifies uh, authentication of management frame. Anyway, I don't want to talk too long here. I'm going to talk about a custom application using your own uh, that that revolves around that that has a socket within it and for example i'm going to do udb socket it is three has examples with a socket but but it lets you set the packet size and then how many packets you want to send it's not flexible so you want it to be flexible if you want and as you learn how to do ns3 programming you will learn how to do these things anyway let's look at the code uh I, uh, I created a under scratch folder. This is my scratch folder. I created simple UDB example app. So if I have here scratch and I have simple UDB example app. Let me do dash L scratch simple. As you can see I have simple UDB application.cc and .h. So basically you're creating a C++ uh, class and then the the driver the main driver the program which basically have the main function all right so in this application I'm creating application like as a subclass of ns3 application I have talked about an example like that so there are constructors destructors I'm not paying a lot of attention here with the uh, basically destructor I'm not writing any code there uh, get type ID, this is necessary because you want it to be, to integrate with the NS3 uh, 
way of doing things, I guess. I have here instance variables for the class. Uh, I have two sockets. I'm going to call them socket one, socket two. You can have it as many as you want. But for example, here I'm creating two sockets to receive data. So they'll be listening on specific port. So if each one of these sockets will be listening to its own port. And then the port number and a send socket, so an outgoing socket. Uh, I have a function send packet, which sends a packet, you specify an IP and port. And then I have two functions as callbacks, which will be invoked uh, depending on which socket received the data. Okay, so in this example, um, just in the constructor, I'm saying my ports are 7777 and 9999, four nines. Uh, but you can have a set function to set it, or you could have the do it in get type ID. And if you want to use the, uh, the object factory, the NS3 object factory, but this is good. Uh, I'm going to have a start application in start application. When the applica application starts, I'm going to create sockets and just have a code here because I don't want to repeat the code. So basically in this code, I am doing binding to any incoming uh, IP address using that port number. Okay. Uh, this code is from UDB echo uh, client and server, but I just basically you could see how it's done there and they have it done for IP version six as well. But you don't, I mean, I'm not going to do that, but if you want to do it, you can see a reference for that in UDB echo client and UDB echo server. Okay. And then I'm going to set the receive callback for these two functions, uh, for these two sockets for hand, uh, to target handle read one and handle read two. And then I'm going to create a send socket, um, as follows. I'm not specifying IP address here because I don't know but I have a, a send packet function that uses this packet. Uh, this is handle read. So basically it prints that I received a packet. So when you receive a packet here, it will be stripped of all the um, headers. So it will only have the payload. Uh, use packet tags if you want to attach some useful information to it, which, which is much easier than playing with a payload, which I can talk about if you want. <laughs> And then handle read two for the second socket, uh, reception socket. So for the send socket, I am going to connect to the IP that we pass it and the port that we pass it and then send that packet down the socket. That's it. So uh, let me test this with a very simple example. I just created a LAN of four computers. So this is my example. Uh, it's called uh, UDB socket example. It's a main function. So I'm creating four nodes, CSMA, so Ethernet network. Uh, I specify the data rate and the latency, and then I do the install. Uh, this is called the um, install the uh, CSMA devices to the nodes and then basically set up the IP addresses. So they are all have this prefix. Okay. I'm just going to enable printing because I want to get some information from packets, uh, with the ASCII here. And, uh, then comes the part where we create the application. I'm just going to call create object. This is my new class, simple UDP application. I'm going to set the start time zero, stop time 10. So, so they run for 10 seconds. Uh, we're done to actually install the application. We will, it's merely adding that application to node. So I'm going to add this to node zero and I'm going to add this to node one different application. You might need to have a loop to do it for everything. Okay. And then specify a destination IP address. I think that's, that's the IP address of this one. 
I'm gonna send two packets, one targeting the this port number to the sevens and one targets the nines. And I'm gonna run it. I enable log component here. And so, and so uh, I can uh, print out what I need to print out. Okay, then we'll run it. It's called off dash dash run, and it's simple UDP app paste. Okay, now we can see that we received this. So the good thing about sockets, the good thing about sockets here is that it doesn't matter what devices do I have. So I have ethernet here and it works. I'm gonna test it also with Wi-Fi. So this is test Wi-Fi and I have need to copy these files. So this is a problem that you need to copy the files over to every project. And I'll talk about a solution for that, which is creating your own module. All right. So this is simple Wi-Fi. This is the third tutorial. So if you go to tutorials, LS example, tutorial third, this one, uh, Example tutorial, this one here, okay, which does Wi-Fi. Okay, so I have changed nothing there except I removed the part where it has UDB echo and I created a application container and basically I installed this simple UDB application to all the nodes and then I'm sending a packet to this IP address and I'm sending them at the same time. Of course, it will be queued and it will be sent one after the other. And uh, if we run this one, what was this one called? Test Wi-Fi. But I'm going to first do NS log equal simple UDP application equal info WAF dash dash run. It's test Wi-Fi dash dash tracing. So I'm just gonna enable PCAP. Okay, it should run and output the exact same output. As you can see, it works with a Wi-Fi and this one generated a, uh, oh, let's look at the ASCII from the first one. This is asking from the first one. Uh, let me make this smaller. Uh, tie it slightly bigger. So you can see there are the ARP packets first, and then there is the IP packet. And it has the source and destination port. Uh, source uh, port is created uh, randomly. It's called ephem ephemeral, like temporary. Uh, so. If the, if the recipient wanted to reply, reply to the same socket that will be received on this port. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go back and view cap. So I'm gonna open, no, this one is uh, the, uh, is the Wi-Fi. It has all the peakings, so I'm gonna, open this file. So you can see we have ARPs and then we have the UDB packets. One was 400 bytes, the other was 800 bytes. So 46 is the header length. So probably we have 20 for IP and then eight for, uh, for UDP. And then we have, I think, 14 for uh, Ethernet. I'm not sure if that adds up exactly, but uh, that's the idea. Okay, that's about uh, UDP echo, uh, sorry, UDP simple user-defined UDP example. Uh, 
Uh, notice here that I did not send a receive callback for the outgoing socket. I could do that so that when a packet sends back, if, if sorry, an application decides to send back, for example, if you look here, this is source port destination port, right? So if the recipient decided to reply on the same socket, it will be picked up over this port number, okay? So that's concept from networking. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you find it useful. If you have any question, uh, email me or comment. And please like and share and subscribe and all the good things. Thank you and have a great day.